POV, you're European, you just got your driver's license, and you're looking at cars to buy for up to 5,000 euros. You've come to the right place. Welcome to this guide on buying your first car as a novice driver. As somebody who was in this situation a little more than a year ago and having spoken to and knowing a lot of experts on the subject, I'm here to give you some advice on what cars you should be looking at. With all factors considered, reliability, maintenance, equipment, looks, fuel consumption, and so on and so forth. This video is also good for the parents looking to buy their novice driver child a good used car for their first car. Before I get into it though, I just want to clarify a few things. This video isn't made under the assumption that all of my viewers' budgets are at this level. If you want me to do a guide on a different budget or price bracket, please shoot me a comment and I'll get on that as soon as possible. Secondly, this one is mostly for the novice drivers themselves watching this video and especially those who are car enthusiasts. I understand the desire for a car that's 30 plus years old or old school JDM legends or just automotive oddities of the 20th century. I too fight the urge to impulsively buy a Citroen CX, a Peugeot 605 or a Rover 800 from time to time. Believe me though, you do not want that as your first car. As tempting as it may be, old cars are old. They require lots of attention, maintenance, repairs, spare parts that might be difficult to source, they lack modern amenities, and they're just not the best ideas for first cars, especially if they're cheap and basically write-offs. If you or the parents are willing to put up with maintaining a car from the 80s and 90s, or possibly even before that, then by all means go for that. But if you just want a reliable, easy to maintain, relatively modern daily driver that will still fit the build just fine, you can consider these options. Now with that out of the way, let's get into this. As well as telling you about these cars, I will be using examples from one of my favorite European automotive classified websites, Rezocar. No, they're not sponsoring me, I just really like the site, and because it collects ads from a decent chunk of Europe, the choice is pretty much endless. My first suggestion would be the first generation Suzuki Swift, the one sold from 2004 to 2010. The Suzuki Swift was about a million different things in Europe, but beginning in 2004, this is the Swift that everyone in the world actually got. When you look at the statistics, this one is tempting. It's available with five doors, so you can load up your friends and your cargo and go on road trips. It's a Suzuki, so the mechanical components are reliable and easy to maintain, as long as you avoid the diesel. You could get these with all-wheel drive, which is not something that was true of basically any of its competitors. And the equipment list was pretty fantastic. Air conditioning, optional cruise control, alloy wheels, and all the things you could need. Now I'm sure that everyone's mind is immediately drifted over to that 136 horsepower Swift Sport. I understand, and although I'm not familiar with insurance and taxes in the EU and the rest of Europe, chances are this one wouldn't work for a novice driver. Not to mention that they are a little out of budget. But here are some nice examples I found on Rezocar. What's more, the Swift is more talented and spirited driving than you might expect, being a Suzuki. Next up, we have the first generation Skoda Fabia. The Fabia nameplate came along a few years after Skoda was acquired by the VW Group and it was intended to provide people with everything they love about the VW Polo at a much lower price of admission. This plan worked because the Fabia sold and still sells in its millions. The first generation is nothing particularly special, just your standard B-segment hatchback, but that works in its favor, as it's practical, inoffensive, cheap to maintain and surprisingly easy on your bank account in just about every way. As most Western Slavs, and especially Western Slav students, also love to tell us, the first generation Fabia is basically indestructible. I know there's some stigma around the VW Group and its reliability, but the first generation Fabia is a pretty reliable motor if maintained regularly. It was offered with the venerable 1.9 TDI engine if you want to ensure bulletproofness, but the gasoline engines were surprisingly solid too, and cheap to fix if something did go wrong. As for electronics, well, the Fabia didn't have that many of them. Most of them had crank rear windows and no air conditioning. That being said, I would advise for you to get one with air conditioning, as that's pretty much become a necessity in today's world. Also, try to avoid the automatics if you can. One of my personal favorite things about the Fabia is that it was available as a station wagon. I know, the idea of a young person or student with a wagon is a little ridiculous, but in theory you can pile up your friends in a Fabia wagon with all of your cargo and go on a nice trip somewhere. Safely and responsibly, remember. In case you're still having your doubts, a couple of years ago I got a taxi ride in a 2004 Fabia wagon with the 1.4 liter gas engine and an LPG conversion. The cabbie told me he never had a single problem with it, and I still see the car roaming the streets of my hometown. 
You can't go wrong with the first gen Fabia, they are definitely unsung heroes of the B segment. What's more, the first gen Fabia can actually undercut our budget a fair bit, leaving room for you to make it your own. Here are some decent examples I found on Rizocar. Next on our agenda of fun, the Honda Jazz. Yes, Americans, we know you call it the Fit. In fact, so does the rest of the world, except Europe. For reasons I do not know, the Fit was called the Jazz in Europe. I can already hear you being upset that I chose this car because it kinda looks like a minivan. Yes, I know, but hear me out. The Jazz has surprisingly sorted packaging and it's a very practical automobile. It especially excels with headroom, so if you're a taller person, you'll fit just fine inside. The interior is surprisingly nice and it features a decent sound system and almost all models got dual zone climate control. It's also worth noting that, well, this is a Honda. Its fate is it doesn't really have one. It doesn't really have a fate, it will be reliable and durable through a lot of things. As long as you do the regular scheduled maintenance, it shouldn't give you any trouble at all. Even though the styling may be a little controversial, you have to admit with the sport body kit, it looks kinda cool, especially in blue. I have a friend who purchased the 2006, I believe, Jazz last year and he is very satisfied with the reliability and all the details about the car. Remember, this person switched to a Jazz from a 2006 uh. Megane Mark II, so he knows a thing or two about unreliable and reliable used cars. Here are some nice examples of Jazzes I found on Rizocar. Finally, my final suggestion arrives in the form of the second generation Mazda 2. Avoid the first generation, please, it's, it's, it's hideous. The second generation Mazda 2 arrived in 2007 to compete with other Titans in the B segment. What sets apart the 2 from most of its other competitors is that it's great fun to drive. Mazda has a knack for injecting all their cars with a bit of that MX-5 Miata fizz and the 2 is no exception. It may be small, but it certainly packs a punch in the corners. It's also very reliable, it looks pretty nice and it offers some decent practicality. What's more, with the optional body kit, it does look pretty cool and youthful, shall I say. The interior layout may be a little unusual, but everything is where you expect it to be and it's all pretty much guaranteed to always work. What's more, the Mazda 2 was offered with some pretty snazzy factory colors, including this green and this purple. For being the main attraction at the high school parking lot, the 2 definitely has some brownie points, but it will also keep your bank account and your inner enthusiast happy. Here are some good examples I found on Rizocar. And that's about it for my must-consider used cars for novice drivers in Europe, at least within this budget. Again, I'm not sure how insurance laws work in the rest of Europe, but if your insurance allows you to purchase something from the class above, i.e. the C segment, I would recommend looking at the Volvo C30, the Mark V Golf, 1.9 TDI only though, don't bother with the others, the Honda Civic, the Toyota Corolla slash Aris, and the Mazda 3. In any case, if you're in the market for a used car and your budget is right around 5,000 euros, these are the cars I would look at first. If you have any suggestions I missed, please comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, if you liked it be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel, also follow me on social media, there will be links in the description, and I will see you guys in the next video, goodbye.